have a little bit more comeback potential, I feel like, uh, with that Blacephalon being a one prize Pokemon that can pick up a big one hit knockout on an Eternatus VMAX. We'll have to see how this game is going to play out. I'm excited to see it, Ethan. I'm sure you are. Let's go ahead and get down to the match and see that ever important opening coin flip. Yeah, this coin flip is going to be big. Uh, I think both players maybe want to go uh, their own way. Uh, we'll see what Azul actually decides to go. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Azul opt to go second. Uh, this is one of the few matchups where Power Accelerator is very important. Uh, we talked about pressure early on uh, being important in this matchup, especially on Azul's side. What do you think, again, this deck, so many different attackers, the Cramorant V, the Reshiram and Charizard, what do you think Azul's best way to apply pressure early on in this game is going to be? Yeah, I think Cramorant's Spit Shot is an extremely good option early on. What you can do is just target down the Pokemon that ideally gets an energy on turn one. But uh, as we actually look at Andres' hand here, looks like he's going to be missing a key piece, and that is that basic energy attachment. So that is very fortunate for Azul, and we could see Azul go a little aggressive here, potentially, with a Reshiram and Charizard even, now that your opponent did not get an energy attachment. Yeah, and speak of this hand, this is not looking very good, even for the following turn. It has right. no draw supporters, no draw Pokemon. Azul being able to bump that power plant right away, playing some of those key support Pokemon GX, the Dene, as we talked about before, as well as the Ori Corio. Going to start things off right away by pitching a Fire Energy to the discard pile, grabbing two more out of the deck, and it looks like Azul as well does not have much. Wow. And uh, a nice top deck there for Andres is going to find that Crobat, so it can thin this hand down to uh, at least two cards, uh, we could just see, uh, take a little bit of a slower route. You may actually want to go ahead with a power accelerator, but Andres is going to, uh, go in with a little bit of a different strategy here. Smart play as well. Gonna discard that boss's orders off the giant hearth. Usually would say, hey, I don't need to utilize that stadium card. I have no fire energy in my deck, but you can still utilize it to discard a card from your hand and draw an extra card off Crobat. And as we know in the Pokemon trading card game, Chip, every card matters. Absolutely. Drawing cards is pretty good, and uh, we do see Andres is able to find that Darkness Energy, able to get the attachment. Has a couple boss in hand. I guess you could go ahead and play one here, just try to slow Azul down a little bit, limit the Stellar Wish options, as we do see Andres does opt for that option. And uh, yeah, does just get the attachment onto Eternatus. It would be nice to get off a Power Accelerator, but I think the benefit of drawing an extra card to just try to get the one energy attachment is definitely a little bit better here uh, for Andres. Now, on Azul side this is a time where if you can find the welder you can find the cramorant v and you can get a spit shot off on to that eternatus that has an energy attached to it you could actually find yourself in a pretty solid spot here so let's see if azul can put together those pieces uh quick ball not a bad start yeah, I believe the Poke Gear also getting played, so may have the cards necessary. Needs to find some way to apply pressure. As you said, Cramorant would be nice. Uh, sort of as we see, a lot of these Tempo Zard players try to follow the energy. So wherever the energy gets attacked or attached, that's where the damage goes, right? You really want to apply pressure to something that's not the Zeveltal on the active, uh, right. as it really provides nothing except for a pivot in this Eternatus deck. Uh, as we are going to see that quick ball that got grabbed off the Stellar Wish played, we'll go ahead and pitch that boss's orders that got grabbed off the Poke Gear and find a Dene GX. Uh, we may be seeing a Dene change come down and is going to get rid of a few crucial pieces, mainly being that Fire Crystal is very useful for getting energies back in the late game. Azul is going to have to find a lot off of the six cards from the Dene, something like the Cremorant, the Welder, uh, a lot of things need to happen here for Azul's uh, in order to go Azul's way, or else we could just see Andre start to apply pressure and Azul have no way to keep up. Yeah, if Azul doesn't really uh, find much here, it could be onto Andres to just kind of run away with this game potentially, unless Azul has an incredible turn where he's able to get a bunch of energies in hand and uh, get a big one-hit KO with Blacephalon. That's pretty tough to do until the late game, to be honest. As we just see the Reshiram and Charizard come down, and then a Dark Asset on Crobat, only drawing two cards, not quite as many as you would like to see. Yeah, and utilizing that Giant Hearth to ditch a Giant Hearth, so must have found the Welder there off of those two cards. A big grab is going to actually go ahead and throw these energies on to the restroom and Charizard. Uh, we did actually see that Galarian Zigzagoon as well get discarded, as we do see right there. Uh, that could be a crucial card in this matchup eventually, but we see Double Blaze GX is going to actually take a prize card on this Uveltal. That does not feel good if you're Azul, but you need to start applying pressure on this matchup as we see an excellent top deck in that Dark Energy. We could see this a turn of this uh, get a one shot on this Reshiram and Charizard and take three prize cards uh, right away. 
It's pretty tough for Andres to find the full bench of Pokemon. You can only use one Crobat Dark Ass at a turn, and especially with this hand specifically where you're not able to draw anymore thanks to the fact you can't use another Crobat and thanks to the fact that you, of course, didn't draw another energy, but you at least can get a two-hit KO lined up on this Rush Ram and Charizard. You do open up the path, however, for a big uh, Flare Strike or even an Outrage for a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely a lot of options to be played here. As we do see the Galarian Zigzagoon, I think considering playing that down, uh, is going to go ahead and bench that. We'll be able to deal 10 damage to uh, any Pokemon uh, that he chooses to. So we will actually go ahead and ping the Crobat. As we see, uh, looks like opting to use Dreadend, but it's not going to be enough to hit a one-shot onto this Reshiram and Charizard, dealing 180 damage. So it has the ability now to even put in more work with this Reshiram and Charizard. Uh, Outrage dealing 210 damage alone, and can attach an extra energy there uh, to deal 230 with Flare Strike. Azul feels like after that rough start, uh, it's in a pretty solid position here. Yeah, it definitely could be. I mean, this game is far from over. It could definitely still go either way. Azul's going to go ahead and grab some energies here, trying to uh, get some attachments, maybe has the welder in hand already. But what you really want to do is try to figure out the two-hit KO on this first Eternatus and then build up to eventually be able to being able to find the one-hit KO with that Fireball Circus on the baby Blacephalon uh, to take out that second VMAX. So you really only have to take two knockouts in order to win the game. Yeah, and it looks like as we're just eyeing up the options on uh, whether or not to go in, maybe with something like this restaurant and Charizard, sacrifice it uh, in order to apply some pressure to this Eternal this VMAX. Uh, we will actually see the energy go down into that Blacephalon, and Outrage is dealing 210 damage. And now, if you're Andres, you're in a little bit of a tough position. Uh, you have to really consider uh, which of these threats is big. Obviously, the Blacephalon able to deal tons of damage with Fireball Circus. Uh, uh, is down a fair amount of bosses orders i think we see three already in the discard pile and uh in this list uh there is uh not that many i believe uh there is four actually in this list so has one more bosses orders left as uh does find the marnie which will be able to put azul down to uh three less cards in this hand uh this blacephalon deck wants to constantly build the hand size up to have access to lots of fire energy throughout the game yeah, Azul can draw a lot of cards on the next turn. We already see that Jirachi in play with the Stellar Wish, of course. We could also definitely see an Oracorio come down with Dance of Tribute to draw some cards. So for Andres here, I think a Power Plant draw would be pretty strong, especially when you're combining it with this Marnie. Doesn't look like he was able to find it, but still going to be able to do enough damage to take this knockout here on the Reshiram and Charizard. And now it's on to Azul. We know the... Uh, giant Hearth is in place, so you'll be able to find at least enough energy to attack, but it's how many energy can you find in order to discard to take a knockout, or can you power up a different attacker, maybe something like that Cramorant in this spot? Yeah, this would be a really excellent spot for Azul if that Galarian Zigzagoon was still in the deck. Uh, would go down to three prizes if this Eternus VMAX gets knocked out. And then with two Zigzagoon pings onto this Crobat, Kramer would be doing enough to take a knockout with Spit Shot, take those final two prize cards. So Azul is going to have to readjust the strategy a little bit as Cherish Ball is going to grab that Oricorio, as you mentioned, going to allow Azul to draw three additional cards right away uh, anytime during the turn, but is going to go ahead and opt to utilize that right now doesn't even need to play a welder in this case can just manually attach to this blacephalon so we'll just need to find one additional energy giant hearth will be able to secure a minimum of two out of the deck so this seems like azul is in a pretty solid spot andres has the return knockout uh but this game is far from over for either of these players this one is definitely i think going to come down to the wire as i think azul just evaluating the options here on what to do uh Again, you really want to take prize cards here, uh, but Azul needs to make sure there is a follow-up so the second turn of this VMAX does not just go ahead and run things over. As Giant Hearth will dish to the Jirachi, going to grab two more Fire Energy. I'm sure we're going to see one of those come down on this Blacephalon. Uh, what else gets powered up is anyone's guess at this point. Definitely, and uh, we'll have to see how Azul plays it. 
is going to go ahead and bench the Cramorant here, and if, yeah, the Welder is in hand, we can still see some cards accelerated. I actually feel like Cramorant is the better attacker in this spot. You go ahead and knock out the Eternatus VMAX in the active with it, and then you can build up for the big Fireball Circus potentially on the last turn. Andres does have a really solid combination of cards in hand to combat this. We see the Power Plant, we see the Marnie, and uh, it's going to be, if Azul can not find another Giant Hearth, that's going to really limit the options, because that will turn off the Dance of Tribute from the Oracorio, and also does take out the Giant Hearth, which is one of the ways to find energies. Yeah, and another thing to note, as we talked about, Andres is down a lot of these bosses orders, three out of the four. Uh, and Azul, I think, maybe making that play, realizing that uh, if you don't have a way to pick off my Bocephalon necessarily, and you have mm -hmm. to take this knockout on Cramorant with the Eternus VMAX, that could be my chance. I still have three Fire Crystal left in the deck, uh, ways to draw cards with Ori Corio. I believe only down two Welder as well. Uh, so I think Azul has the combination of cards to most likely get there. But as you said, Power Plant, shutting off that Ori Corio's Dance of Tribute, uh, we do see a fair amount of Giant Hearth in this card pile is playing four copies. Obviously, uh, this fire deck is evaluating that. Uh, I think just choosing where to put the damage counter uh, with Zigzagoon, not very relevant, uh, as most things will just be getting knocked out from an Eternus VMAX. And is going to go ahead and pair this with a Marnie to put Azul down to half the hand size uh, he has right now. And uh, also finding a Crushing Hammer here is a nice grab. Big. Usually not very relevant against these fire decks where you can build up uh, something in Ooh. one turn. But this Hammerheads is now going to require Azul to find a Welder on top of everything else uh, that he needs. We'll need to find now a total of uh, two energy on the active plus seven energy. So needs to find nine energy total in order to get a knockout onto this 340 HP monster. That is a turn of this VMAX. Yeah, this is it. This is going to be the last turn of a game. Either Azul is able to find the pieces to pull off the Fireball Circus, or Andres will just take their last prize card on the next turn. Of course, able to knock anything out that Azul could send up because of how powerful Dread End is. We do see Azul finds the Quick Ball here. That could be an out to something like the Mewtwo to put the... A welder on top potentially we also uh, would have to see if Azul has a stadium that's a big piece here because right now you're not drawing much with the Oracorio and it looks like it's just a Reshiram and Charizard maybe just thinning the deck out a little bit it's gonna be tough here Azul needs to draw a lot of cards that is a good first step though Giant Hearth and Dedene's Dede Change here's a ton of cards Azul only with 12 cards left in deck can actually see I think most of the cards available yeah, has not used Dance of Tribute yet. Still has the Jirachi Stellar Wish ability at disposal. And I believe there are still two Welder left in the deck as Quick Ball will thin yet another card out of this deck. That being the Mewtwo with my report. So if is it, I don't think there's any way to really uh, open this bench space up. So we'll just go ahead and utilize the Dance of Tribute. Going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. Looking for that Welder in addition to eight Fire Energy. Needs the one on the active and seven more to deal 350 damage to take a knockout. As it uh, looks like another quick ball is going to get utilized so i think may have drawn to that off the ori Corio. and here's pokey gear that's going to guarantee the welder that's in the deck looking through the entire deck all seven cards and there's the fire crystal uh chip i think we may be seeing a knockout onto this vmax here is the welder it's going to go ahead and throw that last energy on three more cards azul having every card in the deck except for three there's that first fire crystal and uh there's a second one uh, Azul now just needs one more energy to take this game and a way to switch this Jirachi out of the active. There's a switch. I think he has it. Looks like it. Fireball Circus needing to discard seven energies here. Discards one more for good measure here. Eight to do 400 damage and seemingly out of nowhere. You draw incredibly well there off of the Marnie as Azul able to find the stadium replacement, able to find the Dedene to Dede change, and Azul drew basically the entire remainder of the deck and ended up winning that game. Yeah, and just finishing up some things, discarding the bench down, Azul will go ahead and take the first game of this set, winning it in time. So these are big matches for both of these players. Every game counts, and Azul getting it off to a great start here, really just showing us how this Tempo Zard deck can really put the tempo on, put the heat on, and take these big knockouts. Uh, when put in such a bad position, we thought Marnie and Plant would maybe be enough to slow Azul down, but finding the correct combination of cards, to take a knockout, and uh, able to clinch up that game number one. 
Absolutely. Well played by Azul. I would say also well played by Andres. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, you need to get some of those Marnies to stick a little bit better. You got to hope that your opponent draws a little bit slower, but nothing stopping Azul today, it seems. Andres is going to try his best. We've, of course, got a second game here of this match. Andres needing to win this game in order to force a game three here on this winning in round. Winner, of course, moving on to the global finals, and then the loser will have to fight their way through the loser's brackets. So let's go ahead and get down to this second game. Andres is going to have the option here. Do they choose to go first? Do they choose to go second? I think generally you want to get the attachment to your Eternatus on the first turn, but also at the same time, there is a lot of benefit in forcing this Welder Reliant deck to go first since they cannot play a supporter. Yeah, we haven't really seen Andres utilize the Power Accelerator to get more energy into play uh, throughout the rounds that we have seen. Uh, is actually going to go ahead and opt to go second here in game number two. It's going to allow uh, Azul, will not be able to play Welder this turn, uh, but can still put on some pressure with this Reshiram and Charizard. Uh, we'll see what he opts to go ahead and start attachments with. We see the Cramorant come down to the board and is going to go ahead and manually tax the Fire Energy. And that's really all this Welder deck can do going first. Cannot play Welder. Uh, really no reason to dig through your deck even further, as his hand is not looking very good for Andres. Has Pokemon Communications. We may just see something like this Turnus get grabbed, but it actually looks like going to grab the Crobat, and uh, that just this hand is all dark energy besides this Crobat. We'll be able to look at three more cards, uh, but this is not looking so great for Andres. We'll go ahead and use Dark Acid for three. Does Ooh. find the Eternatus with dark energy, but Chip, as we see in this hand, there is not really much of a follow-up for the following turn. Yeah, I understand Andres' struggle there on the first turn. Do you grab the Eternatus, just get the guaranteed attachment? Well, I mean, if you do that, you're kind of just stuck with a terrible hand. So decided to go with the Crobat to draw three cards, try to advance the hand a little bit. Got bailed out, was able to still find an Eternatus and get the energy on it. Sure, this hand is still not super strong, but you've gotten through more of the deck. Now you're increasing your opportunities, increasing your top deck outs to uh, continue to play through this game and to continue to draw cards. As action back on Azul, we'll start things out with a Cherish Ball. Is going to go ahead and search the deck for any GX Pokemon so it can find something like another Reshiram and Charizard. Dedenne or Oricorio has plenty of options to look at right now when it comes to things. So uh, I think just doing a first deck search as well. Obviously, these players, as we said, checking your prizes. So important in the Pokemon trading card game. You want to know what pieces, especially in what we would say a deck that requires combos to get off, right? You need to know how many fire energy are in your deck. You need to know how many fire crystal you have. A lot of key pieces, specifically in this uh, Tempo Zard deck, but also in majority of decks. Uh, we'll see what gets grabbed. We could very likely see the Dedenne get grabbed so that it can get Azul some more fresh cards out of the deck. But we're actually going to go ahead and see it grab the Oricorio. Uh, just wants to get that into play, it looks like, uh, at this point, possibly thinning it out of the deck. But we know how powerful Oricorio is in late turns of the game. Allowed Azul to find the cards necessary last game to take uh, the knockout onto that big Eternatus VMAX. Uh, what do you think uh, Azul's main game plan is going to be on the second turn of the game? Is there anything he specifically really wants to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I think here you're just going to try to get off as big of an attack as you can. You know, take take the prizes quickly. I mean, that's how you win the game, right? You got to take all six of your prize cards before your opponent does. So you want to apply the pressure here if you can. You've got two options with the Reshiram and Charizard, either Double Blaze or Flare Strike. I don't hate either option at this point. Double Blaze would uh, mean you could Flare Strike for a little bit more damage next turn, but also if you Flare Strike, you have the option to get Double Blaze for the full effect. But this is a matchup where I think Double Blazing for 300 versus Double Blazing for 200 doesn't really matter, of course, uh, Eternatus VMAX with that monstrous 340 HP. Yeah, we see the Zigzagoon will come down in the second game. Interestingly enough, uh, pinging the uh, Spirit Tomb in the active, it looks like Azul is trying to line up an Outrage line of play. Obviously, the more damage counters you put on Spirit Tomb, if you're not knocking it out, the more that Anguish Cry attack does. Uh, so Azul taking maybe a little bit riskier of a play. You obviously don't want to uh, really put too much energies onto this Reshiram and Charizard to take a knockout on such a frail Pokemon like Spirit Tomb, only having 40 HP remaining, as we will see that Dede change uh, go ahead and uh, discard the hand is going to find uh, it looks like the welder in combination with two fire energies to put that energies onto Cremorant. We could actually see this Cremorant come in if Azul has that extra fire energy and a switch in combination can target down that Eternatus with the energy and if Andres VMAX is that, it's going to be very easy for Azul to pick up that three prize knockout. Otherwise, you have to go back to the drawing board with building up another Eternatus as we do see the quick ball 
discard the reset stamp can definitely be a crucial card later on in this game, especially if your opponent has exhausted a lot of resources, but looks like Azul valuing, possibly getting another card out of the deck, could grab Crobat to dig through the deck even farther, or something like that Jirachi to Stellar Wish, and it looks like we will see the Jirachi get grabbed out of the deck. Azul may have the switching cards necessary, uh, and then uh, we will see what exactly happens. There's the Jirachi, and there is the switch. So Switch will go ahead and pivot into the Jirachi. We'll utilize Stellar Wish to look at the top five cards. And there's another Giant Hearth. Maybe not the best grab there if you're Azul. Maybe looking for something else in combination with this. Uh, has the guaranteed, I think, Fire Energy. I don't know if he has utilized the Giant Hearth yet. But regardless, we're going to be seeing Azul put on some pressure this turn. Absolutely. We do see the Scoop Up Net coming down here. I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up the Zigzagoon. I guess grab the switch off the Stellar Wish, right? So you still have that pivot option. And the Mewtwo's Mind Report, extremely valuable heal here, able to guarantee the Welder for the next turn. And actually, no attack, it looks like. We're just going to see the pass. And it's going to be onto Andres, who does top deck a Crobat. Super good draw here. Now you could definitely threaten an attack on this turn. You can play out a decent of amount of this hand here. You could even play it all out if you wanted to by attaching the darkness energy and then also going for the boss's orders. You also could knock out this Jirachi here with Anguish Cry, which is, would not be terrible. Force your opponent to try to maybe deal with this Spirit Tomb. And uh, also a pretty good draw here. That power plant could limit Andres, uh, excuse me, Azul's options. An interesting choice to go ahead and play that Great Ball before the Quick Ball. Uh, and we see that could have actually been uh, it punished Andres a little bit here. It's one less card in your deck that is not an Eternus VMAX and really wanted to find that off the Great Ball uh, to extend that bench size and open up a potential Crobat for the following turn. But we see Andres is back to just another poor hand here, has no real response, and is going to Ooh. actually go ahead and boss his orders the Oricorio up. Spirit Tomb dealing enough damage due to that two times weakness on Oricorio to Dark type Pokemon will be able to deal 200 damage and take the knockout. Uh, but again, it really comes down to what prize card gets taken here in addition to the top deck as well. Not two great cards. Azul could have an opportunity here uh, to start applying pressure, especially uh, with an easy knockout online with that uh, Reshiram and Charizard only having to deal 30 damage, which is perfect math for that outrageous. Jirachi will start things off with a Stellar Wish. Not going to grab anything. You hate to see that off of uh, the Stellar Wishes. Really, you just want to find anything, if that, to help out, especially a way to bump this power plant, uh, which we do find. There is the Giant Hearth, uh, yet another one coming down for Azul. Uh, there's multiple game plans here. Do you think we're going to see him deal with something like the Spirit Tomb, or is he going to target it with something like the Spit Shot on that Cramorant uh, and apply pressure to that, or turn of this V? Yeah, I think I definitely would like to see the spit shot here. Go ahead and get some pressure onto that Eternatus. That's the real threat. Like, sure, Spear Tomb is, you know, doing a little bit of damage here and there, but it's never going to be knocking out the Cramorant that's in the active spot. I mean, your opponent could go for something like a boss's orders to bring up your Jirachi to take a prize, but you really want to target down what the actual threat is, which is this Eternatus V on the bench before it be can become an Eternatus V Max. And another pretty terrible top deck there. A turn of this V, Hammer is going to flip tails. There is not much Andres can do with this hand. Uh, I mean, you could switch into the Yveltal, but then another Spit Shot just takes the knockout. There's really no way to play around uh, another Spit Shot next turn. Uh, there are two Welder left in the deck. Mewtwo can obviously recycle Welder uh, in combination with something like the Stellar Wish to guarantee that grab. Uh, it looks like Azul has put himself in a position, uh, obviously in credit with Andres, pretty poor draws at this point, uh, where you can just get all the energy off of the main attackers on the board, only that one Eternatus, and it's actually going to go ahead and make a, a smart play, grabbing the Crobat out of the deck with the Quick Ball, knows that that's probably going to be what gets played down next turn if either the Spirit Tomb gets knocked out or that Eternatus V on the bench. Uh, Azul may be able to notice here that Andre's hand is lacking after we most likely just see the Anguish Cry uh, at this active. I think also just considering whether or not to utilize Building Spite. If you put too much damage on that Spirit Tomb, that Zigzagoon can come through and clean up a knockout without utilizing an attack, which would allow Azul to put on even more pressure in this scenario. Yeah, you get the 2-8 KO regardless here with Anguish Cry, so no reason to open yourself up to uh, potentially getting uh, hurt by a double Zigzagoon play, so this makes sense. The problem with Andres' board here is, uh, I mean, you can draw cards with the Crobat next turn, sure, but if you do that, you're not going to have a spot to bench an Eternatus, which uh, you really want to ha try to do when you're playing an Eternatus deck, right? Um, 
for Azul, if Azul can find the welder here, we of course could see the knockout on the Eternatus on the bench. And that's another reason I really like the decision by Azul to just target down the Eternatus on the bench as opposed to knocking out the Spear Tomb, is you keep your opponent's bench locked up a little bit. Now in this spot, you're gonna be clearing a bench spot regardless. Uh, doesn't look like actually Azul had the welder, so uh, has to go with the Outrage to get a prize here. And I think this is gonna work out pretty nicely for Azul. A great ball finally will find the Eternatus VMAX, so that will come into play. But the problem, as I said before, when you VMAX these Eternatus is you turn that from a two-prize Pokemon into a three-prize Pokemon, which, uh, I mean, it makes it more of a liability. Obviously, you get access to an even stronger attack, and uh, actually is going to go ahead and Giant Hearth away to switch. Could have just switched into the Eveltal if uh, a different Pokemon got promoted. And we do see there are the cards in Andres' hand to line up a knocker, but the problem with this is... If Azul can respond with a knockout onto this turn of this VMAX, uh, Andres will be left with no energy in play. And uh, this turn of this deck needs time to power up. It is a two energy attacker. Uh, and this can start to be where Azul uh, has put on enough pressure to uh, put Andres on the back foot. And uh, in combination with targeting it down with repeated spit shots, this is where uh, it can get a little scary and tricky for Andres. He's going to go ahead and take the knockout with Dread End, dealing 270 damage. Perfect math to knock out most of these tag teams. Pokemon in the format will go down to one prize card. Uh, I think Azul may have gotten rid of this reset stamp, but this would be a perfect time to utilize that if it's still in the deck. Yeah, Azul does have one copy of Stamp in the list. We'll see if, if it's not discarded already. We'll see if Azul can find it here to limit uh, Andres to just one single card. Andres does have a path to win the game on the next turn that uh, Spiritomb can pick up a KO on a Jirachi. It does deal exactly 70 damage if you've got two damage counters on Spiritomb. So combined with building spites, uh, Andres can... Uh, find that next turn as long as you find the boss's orders. But Azul can also play around this by utilizing Scoop Up Net, taking that Jirachi out of play, and also eliminating that potential lose condition for Azul, right? Yeah, exactly. It looks like going to start things off. Uh, I think just thinking through the plays is going to utilize Giant Heart to get rid of that fire energy to get two. So nice little trade, get one for two. Uh, always great with Giant Heart. Wants to thin out the deck a little bit more. I'm sure looking for something like the Welder, which uh, Azul does find off the Stellar Wish and has the Reshiram and Charizard, which is a perfect attacker in this situation, dealing enough damage with that Double Blaze for the first effect for 200 damage. And uh, we may just see Azul take three prize cards. And at this point, we'll actually be super close to victory. We do know Azul plays that one copy of boss's orders in deck so is trying to set up the game in two turns i think this game may come down to the next couple of turns chip uh andres really needs to put some pressure on and will also have to limit the bench down to five pokemon now that that eternal zone ability is no longer in play andres is in a tough spot uh, it's gonna be hard to win this game, but you gotta kinda hope, I think, at this point that Azul just misses on the boss's orders. You've got a couple of crushing hammers in hand. As we see, Andres actually does have the boss's orders, so it is fortunate for Azul that he chose not to bench the Jirachi once again, but if we do see a couple of hammerheads here, we see one heads, a second tails, that's okay though. Um, we could still see Andres try to find a way back into this one where you have to go like attach to the Eternatus V on the bench, you have to Marnie your opponent, and then, I mean, it's just up to hoping. You gotta have your fingers crossed and hope that your opponent is unable to find the uh, the pieces to boss's orders. And I guess actually now, with that Crushing Hammer Heads, you can't Welder plus boss. So you could just leave the Eternatus on the bench with the energy, and there's no way for Azul to take two prizes at this point. Oh, and looking through, Andres so close to actually being able to close the game out. If that Spirit Tomb had one more damage counter on it, it would be enough to take the knockout onto that Kremrant. Azul smartly scoop up netting that Jirachi would have been enough to knock out the Jirachi. Uh, so Azul, again, playing super smart in this match, wants to remove as many win conditions for Andres as possible. As uh, all the Crobats have been discarded, so that, again, is one less way. As we talked about before, Spit Shot in combination with Zigzagoon pings can be enough to take a win at this point. Uh, but here we are gonna see the Marnie get played, so we'll go ahead and put Azul's big hand size down to four as uh, Andres will draw five cards into a solid set of cards, but I think it's really gonna come down uh, more so to what Azul has this turn. If Azul doesn't have a way to take the game, uh, I think Andres has enough Pokemon left in deck to just hit with the turn of this VMAX and take this game. Yeah, I, I think it's going to come down to... I mean, also, Andres here not having a Crobat in play is really huge. That opens up a win condition for Azul as well, where you could go double Zigzagoon ping plus Cramorant Spit Shot, uh, do that extra damage there. So, actually, Andres not even having any other Pokemon in the deck. So, you actually... As Andres, you cannot take a knockout 
on this Reshiram and Charizard next turn. You would have to find a boss's orders in order to win the game. So uh, I think that's why Andres here decided to go ahead and shuffle the deck. That's a key thing here because the Marnie did put a boss's orders on the bottom of the deck. So now by shuffling it via the Giant Hearth, sure, you don't have any fire energies in your list. You're not going to get any real value from it. You do shuffle the deck still. So now you have an increased odds to draw into a boss's orders next turn. Yeah, and one thing to note, again, for anyone who is just joining us or needs a reminder, this is an open deckless tournament. So both players can see what copies of cards are left in deck. Uh, we could actually see Azul take a play where he realizes that Andres is down to maybe just, I think, one Pokemon left, assuming none are prized, and can just confidently sit here with the uh, the Reshiram and Charizard in the active, uh, knowing that Andres does not really have a way, would need to find boss's orders to get around this. So this is where uh, knowing what your opponent, uh, cards in your opponent's deck list uh, can be super important uh, to creating new lines of play. And Azul's going to do just that and outrage onto the active Yveltal. And uh, we do see Quick Ball top deck, but that's not a boss's orders for Andres. And... Uh, this is definitely a tough position. If you bring up the rest, if you bring up the Eternatus and hit into the Reshiram and Charizard, it's just one less card your opponent needs. Now they can use Outrage uh, to get the knockout. Uh, but I feel like you have to at least come up and swing with this at this point, right? Uh, actually, going to go ahead and discard the Dark Energy. Uh, interesting choice there uh, to value keeping an extra Pokemon. You're not going to be one shotting this Reshiram and Charizard anyway. So now you will need to find one extra piece. Uh, what do you think about the decision chip? Yeah, I mean, it's you're forcing yourself to find one more piece, but, you know, you're playing the supporter. You still got a decent amount of energy left. I was actually just sitting here thinking, I, I feel like if Andres, after hitting the Crushing Hammer heads last turn, had just held that hand... Uh, Andres would have won this game, right? Azul does not have a way to put two energies on the Reshiram and Charizard and take a two-prize knockout on the bench, right? Azul has two prizes left. And, uh, you know, if that reset stamp is gone, we don't know for sure if it is, but um, you seem to think it might have gotten discarded. So if that is mm -hmm. the case... Andres had the energy for the Spear Tomb and the boss's orders in hand, so you could have won with the... Uh, with the Spear Tomb bringing up the Cramorant. Now, you're just having to pass here. Azul has the way to get the energy in hand, right? Has the uh, the Giant Hearth, assuming there's energies left in the deck. And if Azul can find the boss's orders, there are two Eternatus V on the bench that Flare Strike can KO. So I actually even wonder, uh, maybe Andres didn't need to bench these two Eternatus Vs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that could have been the downfall in this game potentially here. If those Vs were not in play, then Azul would have no way to take the game this turn. We need to find a crazy amount of cards off of the Marnie. We need to find Blacephalon, Welder, uh, a total of 12 energies, or a total of 10 energies, my, my mistake, uh, to take this knockout. And uh, while you do have the cards necessary with this hand to take the win uh, with Boss's Orders, again, as you talked about, that decision is kind of two sides of the same coin, right? You guarantee the game for yourself, but you leave your opponent with such a massive hand size. So you're pretty much putting it on them to have it uh, that that turn as we actually see quick ball will discard the giant hearth the energy will get attached to the active zigzagoon will go ahead and place an extra damage counter on that spirit tomb and this is going to be a big curb for five cards can azul find the boss's orders needed to take this game uh only plays one in the deck so we'll need to find that there here's a big poke gear it does there find it the boss's orders that is huge here azul will have the cards necessary to take the knockout because of andre's benching those to turn of this v azul is going to go ahead and take this set 2-0 and will be your second player advancing into the global finals what an excellent play by Azul, really showcasing, again, the power of this Welder Box deck, able to apply so much pressure, was able to find the pieces there in that final turn of game number two. Uh, and congratulations to Azul, uh, advancing to uh, the uh, Global Finals with a 7-0 record, uh, not dropping a single game in this tournament. Incredible, especially with a Welder deck. Not